This is the ventral aspect of the brainstem. That is a ventral, that's a ventral aspect of the brainstem. And in the ventral aspect of the brainstem, you will see how cranial nerves are emerging out. First, let's, if, if I help you identify the different parts of the brainstem in this, well guys, the area which I'm highlighting for you, this area is a part of the midbrain called a cerebral peduncle. It is having the descending tracts coming from cerebrum, so we call it a cerebral peduncle. It is called a cerebral peduncle. You can call it cerebral peduncle or you can even call it the crust cerebri. The descending tracts of cerebrum are running through it, so we call it cerebral peduncle or crust cerebri. Crust cerebri. That's cerebral peduncle is a part of midbrain. So when you're looking at a cerebral peduncle, you're not looking at anything of cerebrum actually. You're looking at a midbrain only. It's a portion of the midbrain, the ventral part of the midbrain, which is giving passes to the descending tracts of cerebrum. That's why the name cerebral peduncle. The only nerve that you see emerging from the cerebral peduncle, from the inside of the peduncle, is a third cranial nerve. So if, if, you, if you see a nerve present in the interpeduncular fossa, that's a third nerve. Look at this. Can you see the fossa between them? That is an interpeduncular fossa. This fossa between the two peduncles is interpeduncular fossa, where you can see we have mammillary bodies, that is a mammillary body to be seen. We have infundibulum of pituitary, that is eye is infundibulum of pituitary gland. But talking about the nerve, it's a third nerve which is emerging from the interpeduncular fossa. Fourth is the only nerve which emerges from the dorsal aspect of the brainstem. Fourth is the only cranial nerve. So you're looking at the fourth nerve right now from the front. When I'll show you the brainstem from the back also, again you will see fourth nerve. So fourth is the only nerve you will see from the ventral aspect as well as from the dorsal aspect. So third nerve is from interpeduncular fossa. Look for the peduncles, look for the only nerve inside, that is third nerve. Fourth is the thinnest cranial nerve and that is coming from the dorsal aspect of brainstem. When you look at this, the pons, guys, in the ventral aspect of pons, well, there are so many nuclei present inside the pons, but the only nerve emerging from the pons is the fifth nerve. The mixed nerve, you can see the two components of that. So don't get confused by looking at the two nerves there. It is one, the th thicker part is sensory and the thinner part is motor. It's a motor, it's, it's a mixed nerve. So that's a trigeminal nerve. The only nerve you will see emerging from the ventral surface of the pons toward the lateral side. But from the ventral surface of pons, only one nerve will come out and that is fifth nerve. In the medulla oblongata, some of the features in the medulla oblongata that you'll notice, guys, this is pons. If this, in the medulla oblongata, can you see this olive there? This elevation is called as an olive, which is because of a nucleus called as an inferior olivary nucleus. That is olive. And, and this is pyramid. That is pyramid. Pyramid corticospinal tract is, is passing through. That is a pyramid here. So the two major elevation that you see on the ventral aspect of the middle oblongata, that will uh, help you identify it here. So pyramid and then lateral to it, we have an olive. Olive is because of an inferior olivary nucleus. There is a nucleus inside called as an inferior olivary nucleus. The nerves that you see coming from the junction of the pons and the medulla oblongata. So first we have a sixth nerve. That is a nerve coming from the pontomedullary junction, sixth nerve. Then you can see seventh nerve. Again, you can see the two parts of seventh nerve. So the, don't get confused, guys. That is a, both are seventh nerve only. That's a seventh nerve. And furthermore, lateral, that is the eighth nerve. Furthermore, lateral, you are looking at the eighth nerve. So sixth, seventh and eighth nerve. So it's not wrong to say that sixth nerve, seventh cranial nerve, and eight, the three cranial nerve, when they leave the brainstem, they leave the brainstem from ponto medullary junction. They're leaving the brainstem from the ponto medullary junction. The ponto medullary junction is the point from where these nerves are emerging out here. Ponto medullary junction. If you look further below, you can see the ninth nerve, that is nine, glossopharyngeal nerve. The next is vagus nerve. And this vagus nerve that you're looking at is actually along with the cranial accessory only. Vagus and cranial accessory will be there inside. And I can see even spinal accessory nerve coming from there. That nerve is coming from the spinal cord. That's why it's a spinal accessory nerve. So 9th, 10th and 11th nerve. These three nerves you can see they are emerging just lateral to olive. Or you can say posterior lateral to olive. The nerve are emerging from the lateral side of the olive here. So when you see from the brainstem, you see the okay from the lateral side of the olive, the nerve coming out is a 9th, 10th, 11th nerve. And the only and only nerve that you see emerging out between the pyramid and olive, that is the hypoglossal nerve. Hypoglossal nerve is the only nerve which emerges between pyramid and olive. It's the only nerve which emerges between the pyramid and olive. So first thing is identifying the cranial nerves on the ventral aspect of brainstem. Very important. Third nerve is from interpeduncular fossa. Fourth is the only nerve coming from the dorsal aspect of brainstem. Then you will see fifth nerve 
uh, th fourth nerve is coming dorsal aspect. Fifth is the only cranial nerve which is emerging from the ventral surface of pons. You can see that here. Sixth, seventh, and eighth. Sixth, seventh, and eighth from the ponto medullary junction. Looking for ninth and eleven. Find out the olive. You will see ninth, tenth, eleventh lateral to olive. And then just between the pyramid and olive, the nerve that you can see multiple rootlets coming out there. They are all for the hypoglossal. That's how the hypoglossal nerve comes out. Like a, multiple rootlets will come out between the pyramid and the olive here. So that's the ventral aspect of the brainstem. And the, as I said, most important thing is identifying where is the interpenicular fossa and cranial nerve exit. Cranial nerve exit. Generally, what they do, what they can do is they can put up arrow on the nerves on the uh, arrow on the different nerves, and they can ask you, okay, injury to so and so nerve will lead to what? Like the question says, injury to which of the following nerve will lead to the ipsilateral ptosis? Ptosis, third nerve palsy. So you need to identify where is third nerve, interpenicular fossa. Injury to which of the following cranial nerve can lead to the divergent squint? Again, divergent squint, third nerve. Or if it's a convergent squint, it is like sixth nerve. Sixth nerve is where? Pontomedullary junction. So the question could be like the clinically based question. And you, they may ask you, okay, this and this feature is because of which nerve involvement and you got to identify that nerve on the ventral aspect of the brainstem. Now, moving on the dorsal aspect of the brainstem. Now, guys, if you look at the picture of the dorsal aspect of the brainstem, in the dorsal aspect of the brainstem, what you're looking at, you can see the fourth ventricle is exposed. And why fourth ventricle is exposed? Because the cerebellum is removed. At least one part of the cerebellum is removed from here. And that's why you can see the dorsal side is showing you the fourth ventricle here. Dorsal aspect of the brainstem is also showing us the floor of fourth ventricle. Dorsal aspect of the brainstem is also showing us the floor of fourth ventricle, which is also called as a rhomboid fossa. It's like a rhombus, so we also call it a rhomboid fossa. That's a dorsal aspect of brainstem. What do you see? In the midbrain section, I can see superior colliculus and that is inferior colliculus. The four colliculus together, they are called as a corpora quadrigemina. The four gem-like structures, so we call it a corpora quadrigemina. But before we go into the fourth ventricle, I want to show you something. Let me just enlarge this picture and show it to you. Look, if you're looking at the dorsal aspect here, this region here is basically thalamus. And just behind the thalamus, guys, we have the geniculate bodies. We have a medial geniculate body and this one is a lateral geniculate body. Look, if I just mark them separately, there is a medial and lateral geniculate body. This is on the medial side, so that's a medial geniculate body. That is more toward the lateral side, so lateral geniculate body. Medial and lateral geniculate body are the part of auditory and visual pathway. And superior and the inferior colliculus, like superior colliculus here, inferior colliculus, I mean, eyes above, ear below. So superior colliculus, inferior colliculus. So superior colliculus are the one which are basically for the visual pathway. So guys, superior colliculus are the one which are connected to the lateral geniculate body. Remember, lateral geniculate body, not medial. Whereas inferior colliculus, on the other hand, which are for the auditory pathway, they're the component of auditory pathway, they are the one you can see it in the picture also. They are the one which are connected to the medial geniculate body. They are connected to medial geniculate body. We generally remember it with the light and music. Like L for light, lateral geniculate body, L for light. So light means what, what pathway? Visual pathway. M, M for what? Medial geniculate body or M for music. Music, auditory pathway. So medial geniculate body is connected to the inferior colliculus and superior colliculus is connected to the lateral geniculate body. Remember that which colliculus is connected to which body here. So lateral geniculate body to lateral superior colliculus and medial geniculate body to inferior colliculus. Back to the discussion on the dorsal aspect of brainstem. What else you will see that we said the only cranial nerve that you will appreciate coming from the dorsal aspect of brainstem will be the fourth nerve. Now look at this nerve guys. This nerve here is the fourth nerve. The trochlear nerve is the only nerve which is emerging from the dorsal aspect of brainstem. That's how it can be seen from there. Coming to the fourth ventricle as such. Now in the fourth ventricle, in the boundaries of fourth ventricle, Actually, it's the peduncles which are converging. You can see superior cerebellar peduncle is converging downward. Inferior cerebellar peduncles are going upward. That is a superior peduncle going upward like this. And middle cerebellar peduncle which belongs to pons, they are more outside. This is a superior cerebellar peduncle. Now look guys, this is a superior cerebellar peduncle. This one here is the inferior cerebellar peduncle. And forget about the middle because middle cerebellar peduncle is not contributing to the boundary of fourth ventricle. See, superior cerebellar peduncle is fusing with the inferior cerebellar peduncle and middle is more outside. So, middle is not contributing to the boundary. It's the superior and the inferior cerebellar peduncle that is present in the boundary of fourth ventricle. And that, that you can make out by looking at the picture only, right? That's a superior peduncle, right? And that's an inferior peduncle going up. Okay. 
in the floor of the fourth ventricle now let's get inside the ventricle guys in the floor of fourth ventricle you can appreciate a sulcus as a midline sulcus is there right and just lateral to the midline sulcus there is another prominent sulcus present here embryologically important sulcus called as a sulcus limitans that sulcus is called as sulcus limitans it limits the neural tube in two parts so we call it a sulcus limitans into ilar plate and basal plate Actually, anything that you see medial to sulcus limitans, like this area, guys, this all is this area is going to be medial to the sulcus limitans. It is all motor area. And anything that you see lateral to sulcus limitans here, that is all area is what? Sensory area. There. Developmentally, that's how it is. That sulcus limitans, medial area is all motor and lateral it is all sensory. What do you see medial to sulcus limitans? I can see some elevations there. Like the one elevation that you see very much in the floor of fourth ventricle, the prominent most elevation there is the facial colliculus. The most important question also. That is a facial colliculus. The facial colliculus. What is facial colliculus? It's actually the sixth nucleus is there. In the floor of fourth ventricle, there is sixth nucleus. And what you will see that facial nerve. You know the way the facial nerve runs is like this. The facial nerve makes an internal genu in the pons and comes out. And because facial nerve is making an internal genu and coming out like this. So guys, this elevation is called as a facial colliculus. And you see that bulge over there, the facial colliculus. It is basically having the sixth nucleus deep to it surrounded by the facial nerve. It's the facial nerve fibers which are surrounding the sixth nucleus in this area and that's why this bulge is formed here. That is, facial colliculus is formed. Below facial colliculus, there is a, another elevation that you're looking at. Guys, the, the yet another elevation present below here. This is called as the hypoglossal triangle. Well, hypoglossal triangle because deep to it, the hypoglossal nucleus is present. So, hypoglossal triangle. And if you go further below, then we have another triangle called as a vagal triangle because dorsal nucleus of vagus or vagal nucleus is present there. So we call it a vagal triangle. But notice something. Whether it is facial colliculus which is holding the sixth nucleus, abducens nucleus will be there deep to it. Or it is a hypoglossal triangle or vagal triangle. They are all motor nucleus. I told you basal plate. Anything medial to sulcus limitans is a basal plate area and that is all motor. So all motor nuclei medial to them. Abducens nucleus, hypoglossal nucleus and vagal nucleus. But the moment you look lateral to it, Lateral to the sulcus limitans, this triangle here, which let me highlight that for you. This triangle here on the lateral side, that is called, a, this is called as a vestibular triangle. This on the lateral side is a vestibular triangle. That's a vestibular triangle. So obviously vestibular nuclei will be present here. That's why it is called as a vestibular triangle here. So hypoglossal triangle, vagal triangle, vestibular triangle, and then we have an abducens nucleus. So, see, the, the only point is, if the question says, which cranial nerve nuclei are present in the floor of fourth ventricle? Okay. If the question is about, which cranial nerve nuclei are present in the floor of fourth ventricle? So, you'll say, okay, it is sixth nucleus is there, eighth nucleus is there, vestibular, and then we have a tenth and the twelfth. If I, if I write in the sequence, that is six, eight, ten, and twelve. Six, eight, ten, and twelve. But the, please be careful if the question is about the nuclei. It's about the nuclei. But if the question says that injury to the facial colliculus, what will be the consequence of injury to facial colliculus? Let's say there is a tumor developing in the floor of fourth ventricle. And because of that, there is a pressure on the, the facial colliculus. So what is going to get affected? When there is a pressure on the facial colliculus or injury to the structure producing facial colliculus, sixth nucleus is not the best answer. Seventh nerve is the better answer. Because nucleus is surrounded by the facial nerve. So, whenever there is an injury to the facial colliculus, obviously it is the seventh nerve which is going to get affected first. After that, the sixth nucleus lies. So, in your answer, your preference will be the facial nerve injury. Please note that the injury to the facial colliculus, you have to go with the lower motor neuron lesion of facial nerve. Facial nerve will get affected first. Then nucleus may or may not get affected. But obviously, if you choose the best answer, you got to go with the facial nerve injury and the muscles supplied by the facial, which are like muscle of facial expression will show the paralysis. So, if they ask you this question that, okay, there is an injury to the facial colliculus, which of the following muscle will get involved or will get affected? Don't go with lateral lactus as an answer. Lateral lactus is supplied by sixth. No. If there is a muscle of facial expression given the option, go with that. Zygomaticus major, minor, mentalis, you know, um, the uh, rhizorius, orbicularis, oculi, or is any muscle of facial expression given in the picture? Go with that as your best answer rather than going with the abducens nucleus or lateral rectus in that case. So that's the case. The question says which nuclei present deep to the floor of fourth ventricle? Yes, it is a sixth nucleus. There is no seventh nucleus there. It's a sixth nucleus 
एट न्यूक्लियस टेंथ एंड ट्वेल्थ न्यूक्लियस बट ऑब्वियसली सिक्स न्यूक्लियस इज सराउंडेड बाई द फेशियल नव सो इंजरी टू दी फेशियल कॉल्यूक्लस फेशियल नव विल गेट अफेक्टेड फर्स्ट विल गेट अफेक्टेड फर्स्ट सो दैट्स अबाउट दी डॉर्सल एस्पेक्ट एंड वेंट्रल एस्पेक्ट